Welcome to the Mine Lab Show. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks, and information you need to get out prospecting. I'm Gold Digger Dave from Miner's Den. Let's get digging. And I found gold, I found gold, swing and may detect them. This week's gold news sees the gold price hovering around $2,700 Australian an ounce. We're still hoping that by the end of 2020, we'll see a price rise up to $3,000 an ounce Australian. Let's see if we get there. This week sees the release of the MineLab Equinox 800 video. This new video takes you through the power of the MineLab Equinox range, and you can check out more at our Facebook page. Following on from last week's story about rare coins called mules, comes further information of a five cent piece that was misstruck at the Perth Mint in 2007. This coin was a double-sided coin with the head of the Queen on both sides. Some of these, including some 20 cent pieces that have been misstruck at the Mint, can be quite valuable and in good condition will bring up to $20,000. Time to get back and check out your coin collection. You never know, you could just be sitting on a fortune. More information, check out the link in the Facebook feed. With restrictions starting to ease around central Victoria, it's great to see people getting back out and getting amongst the gold. The Midas Den stores in Adelaide, Bendigo and Sydney are all trading as per normal, and our Melbourne store are available to answer your phone calls, to answer your emails, speak to you on Messenger, and give you general advice, but are still close to foot traffic. Well, that's it for this week's Gold News. Let's get on with the show. This week's viewer giveaway is the MineLab Carry Bag. This fantastic carry bag fits most MineLab detectors and has space for your maps and other accessories. You don't need to pull your detector completely apart to put it in, and two easy carry handles. We have three of these to give away on tonight's show. Drop a comment in the feed, ask a question, or simply say hi, and you can win this fantastic prize. Live Dave will draw the winner at the end of the show. This week's top tip is how to fit your coil and shaft correctly to your MindLab metal detector. We're going to need a couple of bits and pieces to do this with. Firstly, a lower shaft, some teardrop washers, a nut and bolt, Velcro tabs to secure the cable to the shaft, and a coil. If you're fitting your coil to the shaft for the first time, we need to insert the teardrop washers into the shaft. So it's just simply pushing those in with my thumb so they're nice and flat one on each side. If you've got the correct teardrop washers, then you'll find they'll fit nice and easily in there. Now, the teardrop washers provide a rubber on the outside edge of the shaft to stop the wear on the inside edge of your coil. So make sure if you're changing coils, if you see your washers are getting a little worn, you can pick up replacement ones from your local Miner's Den store. Once you have the teardrop washers securely fitted into your shaft, simply slot the shaft onto the coil insert the nylon bolt through the hole as such and secure with the wing nut on the other side. Having just secured our shaft to the coil, we then need to get our Velcro strip round the shaft and through the little slot here. Tighten that up nice and tight. <laughs> Grips onto the shaft there and then a little trick here is to make sure we leave enough cable slack so that we're able to actually move the coil without putting any strain on the cable. Oh, what I've done there, you can see we have a little loop in the bottom. We can move the coil backwards and forwards without placing any stress on the strain relief where the cable goes into the coil. Once we've secured our cable at the base with the Velcro ties, it's then time to wrap our cable around the shaft. By wrapping our cable around the shaft, 
we stop any movement or false signals coming from the cable when wound correctly. And I'll just whip through and finish this one off here for you. It's just a matter of then connecting the cable plug into the control box and tightening the screw. Well, there you have it, folks. That is the correct way to fit your coil, wind your cable, and hook it up to your metal detector. By doing it correctly, you'll avoid false signals from movements with the cable, and you'll find more targets and gold more often. The Victorian Caravan and Camping Virtual Show is just about upon us. From the 30th of September for five days, there is action-packed seminars, information, tips and tricks all about the great outdoors. Miners Den Australia have a booth there and we have our special introductory seminar, Discovery with Metal Detectors. It's free to attend, open 24 seven, and we have some smashing deals exclusive for the show. There is more information available on this fantastic event in the link. Be sure to drop in and see us at the Victorian Caravan and Camping Virtual Show. This week's product spotlight is the MindLab Knuckle Protector. The Knuckle Protector goes onto your SDC 2300 near where your coil attaches to the shaft of the machine and stops wear from rocks, sticks and brushing against the ground. A simple matter of fitting this is to put it over the top of the existing knuckle that is there and then a simple press down and it clips on. This provides permanent protection for that area that is close to the ground and can wear on your SDC 2300. These are supplied with the 23 new now, or if you've got an earlier version, they're available from the Miners Den stores. Check the link. Week two, different approach. A method I've always used when working a patch of ground for any length of time is to change my approach. The heart of a patch can draw you in like a magnet and sometimes you will find yourself not getting a different view of the ground you're working. I've had great success on previous patches using this method. I always start to detect as soon as I leave the vehicle and I don't turn it off until I get back. Many times I've been successful and found gold on my approach or on the way back, and in most cases, where I would least expect it. Using this method can quickly open up a continuation of the patch you're working and save you hours of searching as it has for myself on this particular day. I found nine nuggets on my approach and I haven't even gotten close to the main patch. Regards, the Phantom Prospector. This week's quick tip is about the smallest piece of equipment that you might have in your kit. It's a jeweler's loop with a light. Very handy for when you're using your coin machines or any machine at all actually, because it helps you identify what you've actually found. Ah, oh, this is I thought, two cent piece, 1966. Oh well, better luck next time. This week, store offers from the den. With every Equinox 800 purchased, you get a free copy of Doug Stone's Gold, Coins and Relics. This hardcover book is full of information and tips for you to get the most out of your metal detector. And we have another great offer this week from the Dens. With every SDC 2300 sold, we're now able to provide the covers. If you've been waiting on one, it'll be sent out to you shortly. If you're purchasing a 2300, it now comes with a free cover, value $75. This week's gold hotspot is somewhere off the beaten track where you might want to stop for a while and prospect for gold. Tippamurra is a small town situated in far northwest New South Wales. 
in an area known as Corner Country. Tipperborough is the largest town in Corner Country. The town is known for all the granite boulders which surround it and was originally known as the Granites. The name was changed to Tipperborough, a local Aboriginal word for pile of rocks. Tipperborough was part of the Albert Goldfield, with first known gold discovery late 1870s. By 1882, the four townships of Mount Brown, Milparinka, Tipperborough and Albert were well established to service the miners and pastoralists. Due to a continued shortage of water, very few miners were getting gold. They were shepherding their pile of wash whilst waiting for the rain. Others used the act of dry blowing to process their washed dirt. There still exist many of those small dry blow heaps scattered throughout the gold fields. Not only are they a good source of gold, such as nuggets and specimens, but they tell us the story of where the old time prospectors tried their luck. Today, the township plays just as an important role as it did in the past, providing supplies to modern day prospectors and tourists. Take the time to visit beautiful Sturt National Park, Cameron's Corner, or walk the Granite's walking track. The town is well serviced with fuel and food supplies. Enjoy a beer at one of the hotels in town. There's motel accommodation and a caravan park. There are also some stations that allow prospectors to camp and detect on their property for a small fee. The Tipperborough Common is also open to prospectors through a permit system. The wide open spaces and windswept hills make Tipperborough one to put on your prospecting to-do list. We've just drawn the winner of our weekly giveaway. Check the news feed to see if you've won. We'll send you a DM to confirm. Congratulations. Well, that's it for tonight's show. I'll be live from 8.30 till 9 on Facebook to answer any questions you might have. I'm Gold Digger Dave. This has been the Mind Lab Show. And I'm a gold detective, gold fever, son of a gun.